I don't know how someone comes up with that sort of thing. But the thing, the pain of it is a lot of Nigerians read headlines. They don't see that. They don't know that they don't want to read. So they're too busy. So when they just pass maybe a vendor or they see these days on the net, she said, hmm? she said that, what's she saying that for? The first time I saw that thing, I was livid. I was really like, how could you come up with this? All right, I was, last year I shot my film, Robata, and I had a press person who came to interview me about the film. And along the line, he asked the question of, uh, where you, how long have you been in Hollywood? Did you start in Hollywood with Omotola and Genevieve them? I said, no, 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 I already cut my teeth before they came in, that's all. And when you say you cut your teeth, that means you were already there before they came. That doesn't mean you're better than them. That doesn't mean you're more popular. That doesn't mean you're more achieved. It's just an innocent question. Someone, like someone asks you an innocent question, you say, no, it's not like that. This is how it is. And I'm surprised that the past two weeks it's been going on. Steph said she's not. I, I'm my person. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to uh, compare myself with anyone because like everybody says, everybody has something to offer the industry one way or the other. So why would I put myself in that position where I have to start telling someone and this, I am not that. This, to me, it's an embarrassment. Yeah, I did. And that's one of the things that spurred me to uh, set up my NGO. If I say I did not, I'll be lying. Maybe over the years, I've held it back. Over the years, I've tried not to talk about it because my family said, let it go, let it pass. Yeah, I was harassed. I was harassed by a very famous producer who actually put a knife to my neck. It's a story for another day. So I went through that. I almost actually left Nollywood at a point. After that happened, my family said, that's it, enough for acting. Now you cannot go, can you not go look for a job? Because from the get-go, they never really supported this acting thing. My dad thought it was a hobby. It's a hobby that you need to just do on the side while doing the main thing. And I just, I was dodged about it and all that. Then I came out from school after you service and then there it was Nollywood right just at the time I was just leaving school and I had to prove to them that no it's not just village headmaster and the new masquerade and uh, ripples and the rest of fortune and the rest of them that this industry is here to stay I think that was when they just finished the success of uh, living in bondage and the rest of them was just still in the air and I was I had to um, I had to uh, 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 what do I was the time? I, ha I had to prove to my family that this is not a hobby. This is something somebody can do for a living. And then we started a production, and then we started TV soap operas. And I, I was in the lead in a major PZ uh, soap opera beyond our dream. And I was in productions, and I was just doing well. I was. I had the lead. My first production I was a lead character in Crossroads and I did I, a, lot of, a lot of things were just happening and my people my family was like okay good good These, those days we need to we used to wake up early in the morning sometimes you need to trek to audition but they felt she loves it and she's making we are seeing her on TV for one and then boom this happens and this producer does this and my family is in Bruno and they say that's enough that's it so I stopped Nollywood for two whole years. I stopped going for auditions. I stopped trying to, I started applying for bank jobs. I started reading all those big stuff they read. So what, I've forgotten all their names. You read it so that you can do bank exams. And I think of other things to do. Until one afternoon, uh, then I was living in Ikeja at Ogba. I ran into a producer, he came to, he was in NUJ, um, Nigeria Union of uh, you know, Journalism, the, the AUJ Institute, they had an institute at Ogba Bostop, and he saw me, he was like, stay, stay, so I'm like, oh, his name is Fad, Fidelis Duka. 
there's Luca saw me. I we don't see you anymore. I couldn't tell him what I went through. I couldn't tell him that the producer tried to kill me, put a, a knife to my neck and told me to strip. I couldn't tell him. I just told him my family said no. He said no, no. I said, I'm tired. I'm not coming to Nollywood anymore. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just out of it. He said, no, okay, me? Have I harassed you before? I said, no. Have I tried to harass you? I said, no. He said, can you come next week? I'm trying to shoot a film. That was the film Scandal. So, can you come next week? I'm trying to shoot a film. I'll cast you in it. And that's how I started again. So I will tell you, if I had been over time, I'd be saying, no, 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 no. Because I, I, I swept it under the carpet. But it's something that I've realized that is major. A lot of girls have aspirations to do things, not just in Hollywood, everywhere else in the world. But some man or some person, some woman even truncates it because of their own selfish. And then it's either the girl is scared away from what she can achieve in life or she just succumbs to whatever thing you throw at her. Narrated to you, a producer led me to his house, told me to take off my clothes, put a knife to my neck. I don't. What else? What is worse than that? If somebody said that, maybe it hasn't happened to her. That's not to say all the producers are like that. That's not to say every actor who made it to the top went through that. But I went through that, and I kept it bottled over the years because. I didn't want, even some press people came to interview me about it when they heard about it. But I told you, no, 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 I don't want to talk about it. But now, why am I talking about it now? I realized that a lot of people have been enabled by the silence of people who can speak up. A lot of people are doing things and they, they, they get it swept under the carpet because somebody is afraid to talk. The same way a woman is living with a man and he's battering you and you just keep quiet. The same way you, you, you are living with, uh, you are in a relationship with someone and the person is not just sexually abusing, you are abusing you in all the ways and you just keep it under the carpet. A lot of times some girls grow up under abuse but they are too ashamed to come up with, come out with what they are going through and they just hide it because the society will say, what were you doing there, how did that happen? A lot of things. And I tell you, the story is more than this. So if someone says it's, there's nothing like that, it's a lie. I, I'm telling her that she's lying. I don't know who the person is. I don't know if I'm going to pain anyone by saying this, but the, the influx of non-professional artists is too much. It is too much. The industry is like the floodgate has been flown open. Um, when I was the vice president, I always used to say something, and I used to say it very clearly. The job we are doing is a social kind of job. It's a job that anyone is allowed, so you cannot stop anyone. But if we have taken the time to form an association or a guild, we should be responsible to our members and the large populace of actors who has reposed confidence in joining us or believing in us or believing in industry to be part of it. How can we do that? By making sure that they continue to get jobs. And the only way we can make sure they continue to get jobs is to make sure people are, the intake of people into the industry is controlled in a way that we professionals are part of the industry. So that these real professionals get employed. I don't know if you get it. It's a good thing. There's an influence. I was saying, it's time everybody was into hairdressing, banking, and the rest of it. But with time, you could take the shaft away from the weight. So now, um, it's an influx, and there's nothing anyone can do about it because nobody is anywhere regulating anything. That's just how I see it. But I know with time, the real people will stay, and the people who came in maybe because of the money, the fame, or what reason or the other, will move on. I'm sure. It's not, it's not normal, it's, it's an abstract. And I think this, <laughs> anything that is abstract to me is not normal. It's like uh, a picture of a head, then you put the nose here and put the eye here. It's, it's not normal. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. How can I ask a guy out? I mean, how can I ask a guy to marry me? Is it not people go to ask a guy out? To me already, you're bold, you're that bold. And then you ask him to. 
there are too much effort to turn the society around, turn the values around, just so that we just live in a um, in ordinate environment where anyone does anything. Come on, there's rule of life, there's rule of law, there's rule of the, and there's a reason those rules are being set. Even though the people who said them are not here today to tell us why, but they must have had samples and samples of situations which made them say, let it be like this. So I don't, I'm not really. My name is Stephna Raukere, I'm a filmmaker. You're watching Broadway TV. Don't go away.